All right. So Zach Hing is one of the places I get my inspiration from, and he's interviewing this guy. He calls him a conservative Mexican. I'm sure that the guy has a name, um, but th that that's what that's what the interview here is is known as. Now, um, okay, I, I'm kind of picking up because it's the same video as I did in the last podcast. But here, let, let, let's listen to what they were saying about family. Because here I am over in Taiwan, and they were touching on what actually I was touching on with, with Dan. You, you may know that there was this video where I yelled at this guy named Dan and told him to get his, his donkey uh, back home where his family needed him. And he and I were talking about family and actually he's pulling his kid, Dan is pulling his kid out of that international school in Europe because that school is very focused on family. And here, Zach was talking with this guy um, and I, I wish I knew his name, but just, I didn't get to that point. Sorry. Um, but he does have a name. This, this man does have a name, uh, but let's listen to what he has to say. Okay. They're talking about family. I want to say something. Um, I'm moving around here to stay out of your way. I'm not trying to make this super, super polished, but as I said in the last video, I've got the green screen thing behind me. If I'm talking and moving, I'm not trying to disrespect the people behind me. Okay, I, I did this video before where I was commenting on Zach and Justin Wilson, and I got these comments. It's like, you're disrespectful. You're it. And, and it was candid, and I came across wrong, and I get that. And I, I talked with those people on, on the chats about that. But it's like, they really thought that I hated house cats. And, and I'm, I, lo I love house cats. I mean, especially with, you know curry. Okay. That, that, okay. That, that's my little inside redneck humor. Okay. But you know, they were like, you know, you, you're just so bad and terrible. I think I lost like three subscribers, which told me that video commenting was something that I needed to do well. So I needed decided to do more of it because I lost subscribers from it. Like, that's a thing. Like if you do a bad job at something and people really don't like it, maybe that's what you're supposed to do a good job at. So you should keep learning it. Okay. I, idea there. Okay. But when, when I'm moving around and talking and making noise while they're talking, I'm trying to keep my, my face out of the way so you can kind of see them. I don't want to shrink myself down because that's too much editing work and we just need to play stuff as it is. And also, like there's another thing here. This is important. I'm commenting in this video because this is not just me playing someone else's video and you're watching their video on my channel and I'm getting their views. That's not what this is. I'm playing this video to comment. That's what uh, the, the concept of, uh, it's called fair use. That's what fair use is. I'm not trying to loophole this into being, you know, Mystery Science Theater 3000, where we watch some old movie and make jokes during the movie. It's not like that. I'm commenting on this video. So if I'm going to play a large portion of that video so I can comment on it, I'm going to be running my mouth while that's going just to make sure that this really is a commentary and not me stealing his video from my YouTube channel. Like that's like, like that's, eth that's about ethics. I don't think it's about legality because I don't think these guys care me, uh, care about me using their video and giving them free advertising. I think they would like that, but this is commentary. So if I come across as disrespectful, understand, remember we, we don't like hyper wonderfully polished videos right? Remember the last video I did? You know, it, it, we, we, we don't, we, you know, Zach has like 30,000 subscribers and, and look, look at the, look, look at what he's using. He, he's using his, his little, if we can get out of the way here, he's, he's, just, he's just using a normal headset microphone. He's just using his computer. We don't want people to have everything hyper edited, right? Okay. So while I'm commenting on this, if it sounds like I'm disrespectful, who cares? We're not worried about being ultra polished, right? I like these guys. I don't hate these guys. I, I respect them. I'm playing their video. I'm, you know, I'm promoting them. So let's, let's drop with a hyper polished. We don't want hyper polished technology. Why should we be hyper polished in our speech? People, all these new YouTubers are rising up and they're using bad grammar. Zach, I love you. You use bad grammar. You know, I did also before, and there are times that I still use bad grammar. We tolerate bad grammar. We tolerate, you know, we're more interested in people with normal cell phone videos instead of the nice, wonderful studios. How about we not always have to come across as ultra respectful with the people that we know we love anyway? You know, let's, oh, okay. All right. So that's, uh, I said that I said it. Okay. So now I'm going to play this video. They're talking about family. Family is really important. This is the thing that I've seen over here in Taiwan, and this is something they're talking about. And I just want, I just want you to listen to this. Mm 
okay, no, 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 he's not complaining. He's trying to explain a situation. And a lot of people these days, we have, a lot of people would think he's complaining. Now, two types. Maybe there are people, okay, so here we're going to get controversial. Maybe there are people that they grew up in single family homes and they're upset about it. They're hurt. And they hear him talking and they think he's complaining. And so they're going to go out and start complaining also. That's a thing that happens. Then you've got the people that grew up in ultra wonderful, stable family homes. They probably had a Bible in the house because that makes family more stable. Jordan Peterson's talking about that. I'm not going to get into that. But whatever, they grew up in super, super good family. They've got money and everything. And they hear this guy talking. They're like, oh, he's just complaining. Because when, when you've got it, and I've known this, I'm over here in Asia. I talk to the poor in Taiwan. I talk to the rich in Taiwan. They don't understand each other. And the rich people cannot identify with the poor people. And the poor people just don't know how to get past their own past so they can go make money and work. And they both got stuff they need to learn. And I see this. And I'm like, I love you all, but every one of you has a weakness. And you all need, you all have things you need to learn. And I see that. So I know, as I talk about in my Avenue Guru thing, Money makes us numb and dumb. And the people with money are going to hear this guy talking and they're going to think he's complaining. So whether you're poor or you're rich, I want you to know, and a lot of people already know this, but he's not complaining. He's just trying to explain a reality. I think Zach's going to pipe in here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I want to I say something about what he just said. Two incomes versus one. And then you've got the, this, this rate, Hispanics and blacks. Look, nothing in our Western American English culture, and I, I listed three cultures, okay? So it could be any one of those all three of them especially, but any one of those, Western culture, English culture, American culture, nothing promotes birth out of wedlock as much as the, as the, as the music uh, video uh, channels on, on cable. So, my, my, you know, if you're upset about that, why do you subscribe to cable that has those videos playing? Something to think about. I think there would be a market for a cable company that did not have BET or MTV. It's just a subject. Okay, I'm going to let this guy continue here. I, I think impactful is not a word. I, 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 but it's it's charming when I mean, Zach is so authentic. I'm gonna have to go do my homework. I think it's impacting. Um, meaningful is a word, but but you know, it does it. Any anyhow, this this is the. I need to make another video and talk about the charmingly real walkaway movement and the vlog wave that's coming with it. I I need to make a video and talk about that, but. I want to say one thing that Zach touched on. Income. There's a book called The Two Income Trap. I've seen some comments about it. Uh, if you want to read it and talk more about it, that's fine. I've, I, I, I welcome it. I mean, tell me, make, make, a vi make a video about The Two Income Trap. As I understand and what I've seen, families with dual income actually lose money. For, for, I, th there's this argument out there that if you've got one parent working, look, my cousin is a house husband and his wife works and makes the money and the whole family is cool with it. We're a traditional conservative family. Typically the wife stays home maybe and dad works, but, and my cousin, he stays home and his wife works and everyone's cool with it. We're like, yeah, well, well okay, it's okay. So I'm not going to presume it has to be the man or the woman. Um, typically it's the man, but 
you know, life establishes norms and then it breaks them just to keep us on our toes. I, I love it. I love it. I, I recognize normal, but I know that everything doesn't always have to be. And it's delightful when it's not. It's called art, value, commodities. So one parent working and the other one staying home actually ends up costing less money. Like they have more money as a family than if both of them were working because you've got to eat out more. You can't cook your own stuff. You can't clean your own house. You, you can't raise and help your own kids. All the stuff you'd have to pay other people to do instead of doing it yourself, it's better to have one person working and one person at home cleaning stuff up. Now, I think it'd be awesome to have two people working a little bit and both people at home helping keep, like that's also a thing. It's just, you got two people, one full-time job total, one person working at home total, maybe swapping back and forth, but like two people working is actually, actually costs more money. Wear and tear in the car, uh, d daycare, all that, all that stuff. All right. Um, but but having two people at home does help make the family better. And that's the big point that they're making here. And I'm really glad that they said that. And as I say, um, the, the guy, Dan, I was yelling at Dan and it's not his real name, but I was yelling at Dan and telling him to get his donkey home to, uh, to his wife and kids. And the, the, the school in Europe that he was helping his son go to is interesting. The children are required to go home on their 90 minute lunch break and have lunch with their family at home until high school, like 14 years old, then they're allowed to have food in the cafeteria. But there's really a big emphasis on family. And in the Asian situation, I know an Asian family where their 14 year old kid is living in another city and doesn't see his parents on weekends. And I yelled at them. I was like, what are you doing? You, that's your kid. They're like, but the school policy, on the school policy, your policy, your policy as a parent is more important than school policy. And I, I'm like, I, I went head to head with the board of education of my own high school. I fought them and I won. I, I love that school, but they were wrong about some things. A charter school started the next year, took away a quarter of a million dollars a year from that school. They wouldn't listen. Like, no, Taiwan is a country of the people and they don't expect family to be respected in Taiwan. They just let the school have at it. And, and it's a, it's a stark contrast. Dan was telling me about these, like, like they are not supportive of this kid being away from his family, me being away from my family. Like they really, like the headmaster is talking about this. They want kids to be with their families. They'll do exchange students in high school, but not as young children. They want children to be with their families. It makes for a strong structure. It's very, family is very, very, very important. It's a, it's a, like, like a thing. And, um, you know, if, if someone with a single parent home, um, other people should should wrap their arms around those people and and do stuff with them, travel with them, visit them. Like we need each other. Um, you know, helping others. We 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 get humbled. We learn more about each other. Being together, it's, it's a great opportunity. I think um, Bill Hybels, uh, one of the big first mega churches in America, he had a thing. I think it was a car clinic where where the men would come in and 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 single mothers would bring in their cars and the men would work on them. They do that on like a Monday or something. And like that was and for them in their community out in Schaumburg and in, in South Barrington, Illinois, that really worked and did a lot of good things for them. So, you know. Just family is important. You have a single, single parent families. Uh, you know, there's, there's other stuff involved. Just remember that family is important. Whatever your situation is, family is, family is very, very important. We don't want to just farm our kids out to the system. And they're doing that in Asia. And so this, this Taiwanese guy, Dan, he's talking about his kid. He says, I think they're really, really right. Family is really, really, really important. So uh, that was that. Talk about family. Uh, cheerio. Talk